Hi folks, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. We are on top of the world. We're at Grizzly Peak in Oakland. Uh, it's about 10 o'clock in the morning. It looks like it's uh, 5 o'clock in the morning. It's still misty and dewy up here. Anyway, what we're going to show you today, guys, is this fella, the contractor, he scored all this with a saw blade thinking, well, gee, if I score it, will it stick better? Not necessarily, guys. You don't really need to score it like that. Uh, he did a real nice job with the paper and wire. What we're going to show you how to do is match this finish here. This finish was originally a 2030 done by a color coat, a cementitious type finish. And you, you apply your, your third coat and then you float it, which gives you that. But it's been painted so many times. I'll show you another way that we can match that. So Jay went ahead and he mixed me up some uh, scratching brown material same day stuff. So I'll show you what, what I'm going to do guys. Is first thing I'm going to do is put a scratch coat on all of this. This is perfect mud by the way. A lot of you guys call and say hey you made that look easy. Well I can make it look easy if I have good mud guys. If the mud is running off the hawk that's soupy mud and very few people can make that look easy. So. What I'm doing here, guys, is giving it my first coat. Okay. And we don't have a corner, which for mud like this, not the end of the world. I'll show you why. I'm going to get this corner over here, but first thing I want to do is finish underneath my window. This mud we're using is a same day type of material. And if you mix it just right, guys, and we, we take accountability for, say, if it's 100 degree, if it's cold, and today is a pretty cold day, so Jay makes it just right, a little, a little stiff for me, so that it'll set when I need it set. Right here where we don't have a corner egg, here's what a fellow like me can do. I can put it here, take it, put it here, then bring this up just like so and make that corner. Will it be as strong as one with a corner aid? Pretty much. I mean, the corner aid gives us a guide, gives us something to stop to. And now watch, if I pull this toward me and then the corner falls out. But if I hold it here, pull it toward me and pull that, boom, instant corner. Okay, guys, now what I'm going to do is always look up and give a little extra. I'll show you how we get above this window, too, guys. <clears throat> now, with, with mud this stiff right here, it's kind of perfect for what we need. We're going to put a little bit here. Now, granted, too, these fellows went through a lot of work to get this mahogany in here. So, I don't want to mess it up, so we put a little bit of tape right there, of course. I don't care how good you are, guys. Got to tape it off. Okay, so we're going to continue. Cut that. Cut it back. Climb this stuff here. And let's see. Keep on going. Go all the way up to the top. I'll show you how fast this is actually damn near ready to float. Okay. A little bit more on that top corner. That way when I float it, it doesn't sink in. And again, guys, all this is is practice. Now, what I'm going to do is take a look underneath here because sometimes you could think you got it just full and you look under and you, it's not just full. So, I'll get that. I'll show you how fast this material is going to set. Okay, you see me just putting it on. Okay, that's all I need for this particular side. And again, you see how stiff that's getting. This is on a timer, guys, this particular mud. So after 
another 10 minutes to 15 this will be pretty pretty set it'll be set and it won't reach its full strength until uh, 28 days what is the full strength of this stuff uh, this particular stuff is around 3,000 psi when it's fully cured and it again it takes about 30 days to get its full strength all right now that that's done I'm gonna give this well let's let's check it out just for the sake of not having to turn that on and off a couple times hard rubber float sponge float I'm gonna take the sponge float and no we don't have no water up here but that's okay let me get the top of this. And what I'm doing is I'm just bringing out the aggregate. This compresses it, gets it in there, and I match this finish right here. As I said, I was going to use my hard rubber float, and I still will, but toward the bottom there. And see, there's a pretty good match. You get that camera right up into it, yeah. You can, uh, you, can, you can show the aggregate coming out to match the aggregate that's here. Now, it's just generally, folks, I'll have water on my green sponge float, but we are on a roof and I forgot my water. So, I'm going to show you how much we can do just using. A green, spo uh, a, a green sponge float without water. Okay, so uh, now this corner, as I said before, this is just, I just made this corner. So I'm gonna get my joint in. Oh, need water. But anyway, uh, let's see, is it ready? This is not ready anyhow. So give me about, uh, oh, five minutes to ten to let this set and in the meantime I'm gonna finish this other side and when this is ready I'll show you how we float it of course we got to have some water up here all right guys we're gonna start off right where we left off five minutes ago we were gonna do the other side but we finished we thought for the sake of explanation we'll just show where we left off now clean water I can clean this float and get all the crap out of it otherwise it'll drag just like that I don't want it to drag so with the clean water I'll clean my tape I'll come down here, clean that tape, and that's ready to pull off now, guys. Now, with the clean water also, you see where it drug here, that's where it was too heavy. It got, the sponge got full of mud. So, now that I got some water on here, I'll just float out this joint. What I like to do, guys, if you've watched any of our stuff, is float into the joint. Now this got too much cement in it so I will take it get the rest of that cement out of there and as soon, I'll know when it it starts to accumulate cement because it'll start to drag so I'll take it here and what I'll do is two now a minute ago I used the hawk to make my corner I can use a piece of wood too guys anybody can use wood you, what you do is you wet the wood so that the stucco doesn't adhere. If you don't wet the wood and you put it on the stucco and then you pull it away, you pull the stucco apart. What I'm gonna do is just set this guy right here, give me a straight corner, and just basically do just like that. And I remember when I was working Union, Danny Smith plastering, we would we'd be using jobs, we'd be spraying out the houses, second three-story houses, and we'd find a couple houses where the lathers didn't do their job. Oh, Fred would say, oh man, go grab a 20-foot or a 14-foot two-by-four. Two guys, one at the top, one at the bottom, would hold the two-by-four, and we'd make our corner just like that. Then when we were done with it, pull it away. So that's an old technique, guys. No magic to it. It's actually quite simple. Okay, so now that I've got this on, I'm pretty much, pretty much matched with what they have. However, theirs has been painted quite a few times. So I'll take the hard rubber float now. Get some of that mud and crap off of it. Okay. Now what I can do to match this painted surface, because mine is a little bit um, too coarse. So I take the, the hard rubber float now and just go over it. 
And what this does is it pushes the granules in and gives it more of that painted look so that when they paint it, it matches a little tighter. Will it match on the money? Well, put it this way. I've done a lot of work for these fellas and they have confidence in my ability to match finishes. So we'll hit it there. Now one last time and get all the, all the water out of this float now. Now I want it dry. Take it, get all that water out of there. Why am I getting all the water out of there? Because now I'm gonna hit it real light. If I use a lot of water here or some water, it'll drip down the wall and I don't want rivers dripping down the wall. So we hit it like so and get our joints. All I'm doing here is getting that joint pretty, guys. Get it, get it nice and pretty so when they come, they'll say, man, Kirk, you're the man. Stuff looks good. Right on the money. Okay, this is still a little damp, but you get where we're going with this. Now, pretty much when, that's, when this is dried, it, they're gonna put a primer on it and paint it, and it's gonna match right on the money. What I'm gonna do now is pull this tape, Boom, done, finish the other sides, and we're out of here. Anyway, guys, my name is Kirk. Jason on the camera. As usual, we thank you for watching, and see you guys on the next one.